Oh, by the way, I just wanted to say on this lies thing. There are emotional penalties on your soul for wanting to believe a lie. <laughs> and emotional penalty is always painful. Right? So when you want to believe a lie, you are actually... So, you know, some people say, do you want to know if your husband cheated on you today? How many people would put up their hand and say, no, not really, I don't want to know. A lot actually do that. Right? Now, why don't they, why do they want to believe a lie? <coughs> they won't have to deal with the emotion. And you, can you see the link? If you want to believe a lie, you don't want to deal with the emotion. And when you don't want to deal with an emotion, there's an automatic penalty. You're making a choice that's going to result in pain. You follow me? Right? Every time you make a choice that's going to result in pain, and we often do this, we're actually not loving our soul. It's an interesting thought when you think about it. All right, divine truth does not allow the lie, no matter what the price. Um, who's been in a position where their husband or wife has cheated on them, and there are people around them that knew, and nobody told them? Have any of you been in that position? Yeah, quite a few, eh? Hey? How did that feel? Betrayed was found out. Yeah, total betrayal of, of friends and so forth, isn't it? It just felt really bad. Now, bear in mind that you attracted it. <laughs> so there's some issues to work your way through emotionally. Right? But what I'm saying is that if I'm a friend of a person and I see her husband cheating on her with somebody else, if I love her in my heart, and if I love him in my heart, I would firstly go to him, wouldn't I, and say, you need to be open and truthful. Right? And not because of any other, I'm not forcing you to be, I'm just saying, if you're not open and truthful, I'm going to be open and truthful, because that's my responsibility to God, to be open and truthful. Right? And I will stay in that truth. And so when he gets angry and upset with me, that's too bad. I'm going to stay in this truth, no matter what the price. I'm going to lose your friendship, that's too bad. I'm sad about that, but... And if you are sad about it, have a cry. But I'm, I'm, nowadays I'm not sad about that anymore, right? Because once you cry out all those emotions, once you feel the grief of people losing friendships because they don't want to be in truth, then that emotion is free from you. And you don't worry about that anymore. It's, it's not a part of you anymore. And so you would say the truth also to your friend, right? <laughs> How many of you feel that you shouldn't say anything to your friend? It's their business. Yeah. I suppose too, people have the fear that it will backfire and they'll end up still together and you use the quite the air that tried to... So what do you learn in that process? That they're not ready to hear the truth. Exactly. And are they going to be good friends if they can't hear the truth? No. Okay. And you need to go through that emotion of feeling the loss of good friends because you spoke the truth. Do you follow me? There's an emotion that's going to come up there. Right? So I've lost many good friends about speaking the truth. Right? People who I, I've loved. Right? But obviously, they didn't love the truth. Do you follow me? Yeah. And how are you ever going to be a permanent friend to somebody who hasn't got this permanent connection with God wanting truth? In the end, it's going to fluctuate, ebb and flow, isn't it? So, so one moment they'll be in truth, Everything will be fine. Then they'll get into some error. And if you're both, you know, one of you is in error, then obviously everything's not going to be fine in that period of time. And then they'll get back into truth and come back to you later on. Who's had that happen? Mm -hmm. They've told somebody something, they've got really upset, <coughs> worked through it emotionally, and then come back afterwards. Mm -hmm. right? That means that they have learnt some of the lessons of truth mm -hmm. yeah, and faced some of those emotions. But the truth never allows a lie, not knowingly. Do you know what I mean? So if you know somebody is lying right now and you allow them to continue doing it, and I don't mean you allow them in the sense of like you've got control over them, I mean you allow the lie itself to continue unopposed. You follow me? So I'm not talking about opposing the person, I'm not talking about judging the person, I'm just <coughs> saying the lie itself is an object in its own right. 
It's an emotion now being passed through all of your surroundings, all of through your environment. And what do emotions of lies create? Pain. They all create pain. You follow me? The only, it's only the emotions based around truth and love that create bliss. So every time you allow the lie, this <coughs> object called a lie, to exist, you are allowing, in fact, pain to exist. And the key is to see that. Jeff, yeah, wouldn't it, like, you know, get back to that, if you saw a friend having uh, a relationship with somebody else, yep. wouldn't it be more, more important that you go to the person having a relationship and say, look, I can't have this relationship with you while you're doing this? I mean, is it really your part to go and tell their wife or their husband? Is it really your part to do that? I don't know. Well, yeah. your first comment is spot on. Of course you'd go to the person who's doing the act and say, look, I don't feel we can have a truthful relationship while you're not having truthful relationships yourself. So obviously if you're willing to lie to your wife, you're certainly willing to lie to me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't feel that we can have a truthful relationship. But in the end, like, would, would even a loving space be to reject the person under no matter what they're doing? So I'm not talking about rejecting the person. I'm just talking about saying the truth. Mm -hmm. Right, so I would never go to a person and say, oh, I'm not going to be your friend because you're doing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a judgment, isn't it? It's a judgment and it's also a condemnation and a rejection. And I, why, why would I want to do that? All I want to do is go to him and say, look, you're not telling the truth. And I'm, I'm here because I, like, I love the truth. And as your friend, I, I love you so much that I'm willing to tell your truth to everyone. People get really upset with me. <laughs> because they feel nothing's private. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that's a big, that is a big issue. Honestly, in the spirit world, nothing is private. Nothing. Do you, do you not think that at the moment every single skeleton in your closet is known by actually thousands of people if they wanted to know? Every single spirit in this room knows every single ske skeleton in your closet. Huh? Right from the ones who are still practicing evil, right to the ones who are celestial and are in a state of love. They all know your skeleton. And they say that all skeletons always come out of the closet. Of course they do, because all of these spirits know them. And of course at some point they're going to try and tell someone else them, right? And particularly if they're manipulative or controlling, rather than helping you deal with their emotion, they'll tell someone else them. So why do you want to protect all your skeletons in your closet? Because of an unresolved emotion that you don't want to feel. That's all. That's all it but is. Yeah, where's the free will there, though? If they go and tell somebody else, where's the free will for this person? The free will is I'm allowed to feel an emotion in you, and I'm allowed to go and tell this person over here. You realise that, you know, Carol's got this emotion where she over nurtures people. I call it and, and, and Carol, totally, she's, got free will. she's totally in denial about it. I'm allowed, I'm allowed to say those things. I, I have free will, don't I? Yeah. I'm allowed to say those things. I, I've got to look sincerely at why I'm saying those things to class. You know, like, what's my purpose? Now, if my purpose is to help him through a personal truth, then that's a loving purpose. Here's a good example. Here, talk to this lady. She's feeling the same feeling you're feeling. You might be able to connect or whatever, you see? That's my purpose. If my purpose is just to make you feel bad, then straight away my intention has broken a law of God anyway. And straight away there's a law of compensation effect on my soul if my intention was bad. So look at your intention of doing it. What's your intention? But in the end, yes, actually every single thing in your soul, every single thing you have done, every single thing you're ashamed of, there are literally hundreds of people who know about it. And when you pass in the Spirit, this is one very confronting issue that most people have when they pass, they realise, hang on a sec, all my emotions are naked. <laughs> and every single thing I've ever done is naked to every single person around me. You imagine that. If you've got issues of shame, what's going to come up straight away? Lots of shame. Why not do it now? Get over that now. Get into this space now where you're totally open, totally free, totally able to be yourself without reservation, totally able to talk about anything you want.